Welcome back, this is now part 7, and let's get uh, back to the gunfight. Boy, Lady Penelope's a real calamity Jane. <laughs> oh. Parker's just letting the lead fly, isn't he? Oh dear, the bad guys have shot out the computer thing that controls its height. Oh dear. That can't be good. I suggest you throw your guns down. If you don't, you can say goodbye to Tintin. Father, I've lost contact with Skyship One. Right, Scott. At what position do you expect to rendezvous with it? According to my calculations, at approximately 10,000 feet, about five miles east of Dover. Well, all you can do, Scott, is beat the hell out of those machines and get there as soon as you can. FAB. Very smart, Penelope. So you radioed your base. That's right, Mr. Foster. You should know that you can't outwit international rescue. I'm not so sure. The game isn't over yet. We have you all as our hostages. The Thunderbird machines arrive. I've got an idea they're going to do just what we tell them to. Meanwhile, the gravity compensating machine has come to a standstill. The jet engines on this bus are to give it forward movement only. The ship can't maintain height unless the gravity compensators are working. I'm well aware of the situation. We're losing height quite slowly. It'll be half an hour, yes, before there's any real danger. Martin, up on the top deck and radio down as soon as those Thunderbirds arrive. Did you hear that? He called him Marvin. Hang Marvin! No! You mustn't be working for the bad guys. No sign of Skyship One. I don't understand it, Scott. It's a big ship. It'd be hard to miss. Oh, wait. I can see it. It's about 8,000 feet below me. I don't get it. According to the New World pre-programmed schedule, it should be at 10,000 feet at this point. I'm going down to take a look. Yeah, baby. <laughs> It's only flying at 2,000 feet at the moment. Thunderbird 1 directly above us. Okay, Martin. All right, untie them. I want you all up on the top deck and no fault to move. Okay, Father. I'm alongside. I can see one of the stewards standing on the top deck. Otherwise, no sign of luck. When Thunderbird 2 arrives, we'll attempt to board her. Be with you in about five minutes, Scott. Okay, Virgil. Dad, there's trouble ahead. Oh no! Radio towers! Radar detection towers. Dad, Skyship One is losing height. Why, I don't know. About one mile ahead is an early warning system with interceptor towers. The estimated height, 1,200 feet. Below it, it's a missile site. The way it looks from here, Skyship One is on a collision course. The only thing that can save it is its height. But I've got my doubts. Thunderbirds Jeopardy music. There's a tower ahead. We're gonna hit it. How far away is it? I don't know. About a quarter of a mile. I'm coming up. You'd better alert all emergency services down on the ground. It's a missile base about five miles east of Dover. FAB. <laughs> Crap. 
crash. Oh dear, that can't be good. What's the situation, Scott? Well, the ship's swaying on top of one of the towers. If that tower gives way or the ship loses its balance, it's gonna drop like a stone right onto that missile site below. Come on, quickly! Up on the top deck and move! We've crashed, Foster, don't you understand? Uh, two to the rescue. Scott, I've been listening to your transmission. I've sighted Skyship. I'm coming in straight over the top. Will more escape unit? Brains is already in there. FAB. Is Brains armed? He ought to be. We've no idea what's going on. It's okay, Dad. I've taken care of that. Good boy. Attention. Attention. All personnel in Sector D to make a flight immediately. Proceed. Okay, this little vehicle just moving past now, the red Caterpillar track vehicle hauling the trailer with the missile on, and that little red eight-wheeled truck that just went by. Um, just a bit of trivia for you, the uh, little red truck that was pulling the trailer is a mixture of two vehicles, the first of which uh, was a snow track, a snow track vehicle which featured in a Captain Scarlet episode, The Noose of Ice, and uh, the trailer was from another Captain Scarlet model, but started off as a Thunderbirds model, which um, which was from uh, Day of Disaster, which was the uh, Martian probe transporter rocket rocket transporter, and it was using Captain Scarlet, and they placed one of the ICBMs from uh, the Cham Cham, and um, used placed that on the top, and so you take the snow track and. Oh, this little yellow tank that just went by, that was the uh, lunar tractor from Captain Scarlet. Oh, back, back, back to my original point. Um, the red vehicle hauling the trailer, that was um, it featured in... And that was the only, the only time that particular modified vehicle featured in uh, this, this film. That was the only time you ever saw it, so yeah. And the red tanker truck that went by, the eight-wheel tanker truck that went by, that was um, a Superon, started as a Superon tanker from Path of Destruction. Yeah, and like I said, the little, little yellow tank that went by, that was uh, the Lunar Tractor from Captain Scarlet. So, yeah, that was a little bit of trivia for you. I hope you find that informative. The blokes... Uh, Derek Meddings and uh, his design department, they never waste anything, they always reuse their stuff over and over again. The Thunderbird 1's coming in to attach a line to hold it steady. Oh, just, I've got to stop it there. Uh, just to tell you, Virgil and Gordon have gone off to the uh, New World Aircraft Corporation and picked something up. And the head of the Aircraft Corporation said, don't worry, we did all the pre-flight checks and, and fueled it. And uh, Thunderbird 2 is already on its way there. So, see you for part... Uh, gosh, the, what part is this? The, the, this is the next will be part 8. We'll get to see the rescue attempt in progress. Well, it could be the most thrilling air rescue since Thunderbirds are go. So, see you for part eight. So long.